Hey guys, it's been a while. It's Cliff Gray here. Hey, uh, just uh, finally getting caught back up to do some more YouTube videos for you guys. Uh, just a little bit of what's been going on in my life. I sold my outfitting business um, and uh, kind of simplified a bunch of things on that end. Um, but I'm going to still keep doing these YouTube videos and hope you guys get a bunch out of it. Over the last few months, I've uh, taken a leave from the videos, but I still keep getting tons of comments. And I love, uh, I love that, and there's so much positivity out there. So I'm going to keep doing them, and I hope you guys find them valuable. Um, nowadays, the best way to keep track of me is probably just to sign up for my newsletter. I'll put the link right here, and you can just go to that link and go ahead and sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get all the, all the new... Uh, <clears throat> the new stuff I got going on in my life. Um, you can also just subscribe here on the YouTube channel and uh, that'll keep you in the loop too. But uh, anyways, in the process of uh, me selling my, my outfitting businesses, and by no means is that I mean that I'm, uh, I'm, quit, I'm quitting my guiding career, but I'll probably limit it some, so I started going through all my old gear. And uh, one thing that's really interesting when you, when you get these uh, periods of time where you can kind of go through stuff and reset, uh, you get a different perspective on things, and I honestly have, I mean, who knows, uh, you know, through 10 years of guiding, um, I might have, like, retail value of, you know, probably 100 grand worth of just, just guiding gear, right, optics and, and shooting sticks and clothing and all of that stuff, just piles of gear, to be honest with you, that I've accumulated over the years. Some I've paid for, some I've, it, it has, has been completely given to me other stuff heavily discounted all of that really doesn't matter because um, now I can reflect on uh, my you know decade of guiding uh, in the mountains and as I go through all that gear I can see what I used and I can see what I used every day because it's worn out so I thought uh, a video to just get back into it that might be helpful for everybody out there that's doing mountain hunts is to just go through 10 or 11 pieces of gear that I realized I had with me almost on every hunt all the time um, for at least four or five years of that uh, decade long period. So I'm just gonna go through that stuff. Um, none of it is a specific theme. It's just stuff that I literally had with me on every hunt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start. So the first thing, probably starting six or seven years ago, I moved off a sat phone and I moved into these inreaches. Um, having communication uh, in today's day uh, to me is like a no-brainer and it's in its essential these little inreach devices um, you can get this little mini one uh, I think they're about 400 bucks but you can get older inreach devices too that are a little bulkier but they work just as well um, all the way up to the the ones that included GPS so the range in there is probably going to be like 150 to 600 bucks 700 bucks something like that but why not have them? I got where I was carrying one all the time. And the reality is now you can hook them up to your iPhone um, and uh, you can essentially have satellite text texting at, at any time. So there's a ton of shit you can be carrying in your pack to keep yourself safe. But the reality is in today's age, satellite communication is probably number one. And I found that these are actually better than sat phones because you have it's a lot easier to two-way communicate with them versus a sat phone. They have a subscription model, but I think you can get ranging, uh, you know, different subscriptions for something like twenty dollars a month, all the way up to north of a hundred. When I was guiding and operating, and we used a bunch of those, probably a half a dozen of them, um, we were, you know, I think each one of them cost me sixty or seventy dollars a month for unlimited texts. Uh, but you'll just have to see what plan fits you best. Uh, second of all, I'm going to go over the knife deal real quick. Uh, everybody's got an opinion on this, but I'm just going to show you what I ended up using most of the time. This is a Buck uh, 113. Um, this, this knife was best for me in terms of just an all-around utility knife. They're not expensive. They're not fancy. You're probably not going to hear a bunch of other people promoting them and um, <clears throat> going down that path as this is like their number one guide knife. But for me, the shape of the knife, uh, how it felt in my hand, and the ease of sharpening, um, it was my go-to knife. You can actually see the knife. I've sharpened it so much and used it so much, I kind of took some of the belly out of the knife. And you'll see that that's just going to be a reflection of, you know, not not sharpening the, the knife perfectly. But it's just, you don't see that unless a knife has been used a ton, and this, this knife has. Um, I always carried it in a what I call like an angled sheath. I don't know what the what the best term uh, for those are, but just a leather sheath. And for me, um, 
I could I can just run a I could run a strap on my backpack through it and hold it that way. But also if I was riding horses, packing, particularly if I was like wearing shaps or something, the angled um, sheath on my belt was a lot better than a straight sheath um, or that sort of thing. And then the other thing is if I was down working on an animal, it was a lot easier for me to just reach across my body and pull the knife out. The, ni the knife out. Um, instead of having a knife that was up and down, I had to reach for it, get under my jackets, get under all my, all my layers. This I could just reach under. I always carried it cross body so I could easily pull it out, easily put it back in, keep it safe. Um, so I just found that that was the best uh, knife for me over the years. And I, I literally probably have 50, 60 knives, a uh, bunch of which were given to me. Um, but in the field, when I was guiding, that was my, my number one guy, uh, my number one guiding knife, uh, probably $80 knife um, versus, you know, I have knives that are 500 bucks or something like that, and that's still my go-to. Um, and then in terms of sharpening them, I just use this this Kershaw, old, I think it's an Ultra Tech, they're about 20 bucks. Um, they pack real nice, it's just a little, nice little field rod, easy to clean, but you can just put it in there like that lightweight packs easily in your pocket um, the thing about this this is that uh, when you need it you have it if you're you depending on a fixed blade knife and you're not using a Havilon or another interchangeable blade you're basically using a scalpel knife um, if you're using a fixed blade knife you need a way to sharpen it and I would use this I would get this out typically uh, once I started working on an animal so it was handy and I could just sharp sharpen my knife and keep it keep it sharp as I went through the animal just essentially when I take a rest talking to a hunter I was guiding uh, or whoever was with me I would just go ahead and sharpen the knife on that so it's 20 25 bucks the next item I'm going to talk about is a super simple uh, little item um, but I can tell you countless times uh, it saved my ass or who I was guiding's ass and that's a little uh, uh, Petzl go light I believe they're called this is it and they're essentially a backup headlamp they have a little a little basically uh, strap that you can pull out and it retracts but you can use that as the strap on your head um, super small it's got a an awesome mechanism here that uh, allows you to basically lock the thing from inadvertently getting turned on so it's a really reliable backup because it doesn't have dead batteries when you go to use it <clears throat> the reality is with headlamps it was one of those things that there's kind of two scenarios one guys forget them um, I always I'm just anal I always had two or three of them probably in my pack but I had a lot of hunters that uh, that didn't have them and then the other thing is a lot of times guys have them but you know you're in a you could be in a hairy situation you're in a hurry to get through an animal get it packed up and get headed down the mountain you've got everything packed up and you're you hit the trail you know you're, you you and your hunter have got um, your packs on and you're gonna go down a pretty precarious trail real heavy and then it's like okay get your headlamp on well the headlamp is buried under the quarter quarters inside the backpack or something like that it's just the pain that has to get so I would put this go light um, just in my my bino harness and I could pull it out give it to her hunter a uh, hunter and it, it really did save uh, save my butt uh, several times these things run I think about 25 30 dollars in there they are well uh, though what they are well worth it um, if you think you're going to get up into some of this crazy alpine um, and and get out in the dark without a headlamp um, you're probably fooling yourself I know a lot of pretty extreme mountain guys uh, that uh, that it would end up sleeping up there if they didn't have a light to get out so just keep that in mind it'll save you from some, some cold nights now I'm going to admit something that I went through tons of different variations on over my career uh, as a guide uh, over this last decade and that's my water system right uh, everybody wants it to be light wants it to be durable wants it to be there when you need it blah 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 well the reality is I just always struggled with bladder based systems and probably for the last five or six years of my guiding I solely used Nalgene bottles <clears throat> and so the downside is probably weight and bulk right they don't they don't fit quite is tidy in your pack um, and they are heavier than a bladder but the reality is they work every time and uh, they don't you know you don't get uh, they don't get froze you know your your cord out of the out of the uh, platypus doesn't get frozen all that shit it's a constant nightmare when you got those bladders you end up with a real heavy pack and you get all the gear on top of that bladder you're just gonna run into problems so what I typically use is I use this one on my 
<clears throat> on my backpack belt where it's handy. And then I had one of these human gear tops. You can find them on Amazon. I think they're about $20. And uh, they're a lot easier to drink out of than the wide mouth of an Nalgene. And the other thing is, is it makes it so you <clears throat> can treat your water right in this Nalgene, right? Because so you can open this up, put your dirty water in here, right? Don't drink off of this lip. You can put your human gear lid on top, right? After you've treated this water. I use a steri pin, I'll show you in a second. But that's a handy setup. And you can see that thing's all worn out, beat up. It's because I've had it on tons of hunts and used it a bunch. And this was always my secondary one, the bigger Nalgene. Always there, filled it to the top and it worked. Okay, so steri pin was my go-to um, water treatment. Small, reliable, I always kept an extra battery. The reality is the batteries last for a pretty darn uh, long period of time, so I never had to replace one in the field. <clears throat> um, but these are awesome. You can treat basically any type of water as long as you're doing it in, in the right size bottle. And so that's, again, why I depended on this size analogy. This dairy pin set up where you can easily and um, without any danger treat water directly in here with a steri pin. This steri pin saved me a ton of times. I I tended to get where I always would carry this even on like a day a day hunt. Um, I can remember several times coming out of the mountains and just thinking I was going to run into water uh, quicker than I did. Had a really heavy pack um, and then finally found something and it was obviously pretty darn dirty and I had this to get, get us through. So, I, I kept that with me almost all the time while riding. And the next one I'll talk about, guys, is just the technology that I essentially, particularly the last three years, um, I heavily depended on. And <clears throat> some of you will laugh at this, but in terms of navigation, knowing where I was at, if there was any private land around, anything or like anything like that that I needed to know about and know exactly where I was, I depended on my iPhone. And I particularly depended on Onyx. Um, and so this isn't a, they don't, they don't pay me or anything. I think for years they gave me free service, but even regardless, regardless of that, I've looked at the pricing. It's totally, totally worth it. Um, there's, there's no doubt in my mind um, that Onyx. This was a, an item that I used a ton. All you gotta do is just remember to download those Onyx maps before you go, and then make sure you've got backup power source for your iPhone. And I think in today's, age particularly not having to buy multiple devices that's the way to go for almost all your navigation you can keep a compass in your pack a good good topo map you can learn about how to navigate and keep keep your directions correct uh, with the sun i've got a video on that <clears throat> and that's all good and you got to have that skill set but on x and the gps of my phone if i was being honest that was my 90 percent what i used to uh, navigate uh, when i needed to you know in the dark uh, areas I hadn't been that much in that sort of thing. Okay, so the next one a detachable bipod, okay? I'm not gonna pitch any specific brand. I'd say buy a buy a high quality one um, But these these changed the game I think in the last three or four years They run from the good ones the reliable ones you're gonna want are gonna run from a, you know probably a hundred bucks up to four or five hundred bucks um, this is a hatch bipod. Bipod. I've been happy with this one, but I've guided hunters with with several uh, different ones. The main thing is you need it to be de detachable, and the reason is is that if you get this, you got your bipod hanging off your rifle all the time. You're gonna get sick and tired of it, and you're gonna end up taking it off, and then you're gonna end up on a hunt where you need it. The best thing to do is just have a detachable, the, have a detachable one. Go through the process. Uh, I've got a video on it, but you can have a gunsmith do it. Have a have a pick rail added or whatever um, you know adapter you need added to the forearm of your rifle, and get a nice quality bipod that's detachable. The other massive bonus of them, outside of just not having them on your rifle all the time and getting them hung up on stuff, is the big bonus of them is they're gonna extend to the right length, right? They they tend to be a little heavier. Um, but they're they're long enough, or they're a little longer than like your your old school Harris bipods that most guys had, because <clears throat> you can deal with it because you can put them in your pack. You don't have an extra foot of of crap hanging off. So these detachable bipods make for very good rest. All right, guys. So this one comes out of the climbing and mountaineering world, backcountry skier world. This Dermatone essentially is just really thick sunscreen. 
it's like a it's almost like a I don't know I've like Australian surfers and stuff call this stuff zinc I don't think it's actual zinc but it's basically just a thick thick sun lotion um, and I always have this in my pack uh, regardless of the time of year or whatever in the mountains you can even see now I'm just getting wailed on by the sun for lip balm and for sun lotion this stuff sticks to you sweat doesn't run it off and it'll really protect you so that I I found that I always had it in my pack always had it the, the next item I'm going to talk to you guys about is kind of funny because I'm looking at them because they're all they're all worn out and that's because I use them all the time and that sticks right so I started <clears throat> doing most of my hunts particularly goat and sheep hunts is with a whippet and for a black diamond whippet unfortunately these are hard to find now um, but I liked an ice axe type of stick because I've shown this in other uh, videos but I could hold it like this and I've got bad knees so if I just had one walking stick I liked it to be an ice axe because I could hold it like this and as I went downhill I could put a lot of weight on that stick versus holding like this and trying to put the all my body weight down is a lot harder. I could basically brace on the top of it like this. And you can find you can find some alternatives to those whippets in, in longer ice axes. Um, this this Koba axe too, same deal. Um, it's not retractable, so I think I don't like it quite as much as the whippet, but it has a really nice um, way to hold your hand on it on the top like this. The reason you don't find a lot of ice axes that are this uh, long is that really for their their use you know mountaineering axes and uh, climbing in the snow and ice is these longer ones they really they're it's it's a lot more difficult to self arrest with them which i think is that's kind of outside of the domain of uh, of mountain hunts maybe you know maybe late season goat hunts or something you might need an axe that can do that but for my use it, it wasn't about that it was just about that i like the handle yeah it's nice to have a little tool uh with you <clears throat> but you didn't really need the axe to self-arrest. So these long, long axes were better for me because I use them really for a walking stick, right? So the Whippet and the Koba, you can find similar ones. I use the crap out of those. Um, as I got older and my knees got beat up more, I did end up going uh, to just two sticks, right? And these ones here, these are actually the Cascade ones from, from you can get them at Costco. They're good. Um, you can see this pair has probably been through 20, 30 hunts, and it's completely fine. Fine, and they're completely fine, um, other than just being beat up a bit. <clears throat> but two sticks are nice too. Um, for me, if I don't have an ice axe where I can put all my weight on it, on the top of it, if I have to hold them like this, I basically have to have uh, two sticks. So, anyways, those are a nice, nice set. You can they pull out real easy. They've got they've got clip kind of these clip locks instead of the tension locks and I, I like those a little bit better they tend to not slide and this I put these quick sticks on and uh, these are pretty cool I've talked about them in other videos but one it's just a nice way to hold your sticks together so they're not flopping around the back of the truck truck right but the other thing is is you can keep your sticks together like that and make a shooting rest for yourself or your hunter out of them so those I used a ton the last one guys is phone scope so I have always had a phone scope in the last seven or eight years I think I was kind of an early adopter of it to be honest with you but uh, nowadays I see everybody everybody that's doing a lot of hunting you know um, wants to go back and look at uh, animals that they were glassing in their spotting scope or whatever um, they carry a phone scope with them I carried one almost all the time um, great product my experience with the guys has been awesome um, over the years I'm sure I got discounted ones once for free or whatever but again just like on X I would I would have paid double what they uh, what they're charging for those things um, and, and I probably will going uh, forward in the future you know uh, as I get new phones there's no doubt the first thing I'll do is buy a phone scope it's just nice to be able to use them you know when you're scouting the other thing is nice if you're in the situation where you can stick it onto your onto your um, <clears throat> spotting scope uh, when a shot occurs even if you're not looking at it you're trying to help a hunter or a friend uh, during that period of time it's nice to be able to look back it really is and zoom in these phones on your iPhones are so awesome you can zoom in see if you actually hit the animal and kind of do a recap so it's pretty pretty cool in that regard but really cool to <clears throat> cool devices um, what I suggest is get the get the actual uh, lens cap adapter for your spotter so you don't have to attach it every you don't have to like stick it on your spotter every time you just want it where you can snap that phone scope on there 
So anyways, guys, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm just getting back into it here. Expect a bunch more videos over the next uh, few months, and I'm just going to keep at it. I'm going to cover a bunch of hunting topics. I'm going to cover a bunch of other stuff, too, um, that might be a little bit more out of the box. I noticed from all my previous videos, you guys really like the videos on, you know, kind of self-reliance stuff. Um, so I'll probably cover some of that. Um, I might do some videos in a little bit warmer climate, so we'll... Uh, We'll get those up too. But anyways, guys, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to the newsletter, and keep in touch.